Hello and welcome to this sixth set of practice problem. In this set, we are going to solve two problems. In the first case, we are having a fulcrum type of arrangement. There are two springs connected, and this is your mass. This component is massless, and we need to find the natural frequency of the system. In the second case, we are having two pulley. One pulley is fixed. I means it is having a fixed center but another pulley is having a moving center and again we need to find the natural frequency so these two problems are and can be solved either by using the force approach newton's approach or we can solve using the energy approach in this session i will solve both the problems using the force approach or the newton's approach so what we need to do here the first thing which we need to solve for the first problem is we have to set a relation between the displacement of the mass with the displacement of individual springs similar problem we have solved in other videos so we are going to apply the philosophy of superposition here that means i am first consider only top spring and i will try to find if the top spring will have a displacement of x2 what will be the displacement of this mass m so in this case here is your mass and here is your spring suppose it is rotating because of the motion of the mass or the displacement and this amount is x2 because i have considered x2 is the deformation in the first spring if this end is moving with an amount of x2 what would be the displacement of this end let's this is x3 i know that length of this arm is 2a and for this arm it is a so simply we can apply the similar triangle approach and i can see that x3 will be nothing but half of x2 so based on the superposition method when i have considered only one spring my displacement x will be x2 by 2 then i am going to consider the second spring and i will ignore the first spring so when i am having the second spring and there is nothing whatever the displacement second spring will have the same will be experienced by the mass that means the x1 will as it is added in this expression so my final expression of the displacement will be x is equal to x2 by 2 plus x1 after getting this expression i can say that x2 is nothing but the force in the spring this is spring divided by the stiffness so let this is f s 2 divided by the stiffness of the spring similarly the x1 will be what the x1 will be the force in spring 1 divided by k but i know here that the force is actually mg so this spring is going to experience the mg force and that means f1 is nothing but your mg second we need to set a relation between two forces fs1 and fs2 if i will make the free body diagram of this fulcrum one force which is acting in the downward direction is the fs1 and another force which is acting here is fs2 if i will take the moment about this point this is 2a and this is a i will be able to find that fs2 into 2a is going to be balanced by fs1 a that means your fs2 is half of the fs1 value using these two expression we will be able to get our final expression so i can write that x is equal to what x will be f s 2 divided by 2 into k because this 2 will come here and this x 2 is replaced by f s 2 by k plus x 1 that means f s 1 by k and i know that f s 1 is your mg and f s 2 is half of mg so my final expression will be mg 2 and 2k so it will be 4k plus mg by k and this is my expression of x from the basic formula of natural frequency i know that either the natural frequency can be written as k by m or we can also write it as g by delta delta is the static displacement so this x is going to give me the static deflection and i can replace i can rearrange the term so i'll get that x is equal to mg by k this is 1 by 4 plus 1 so i'll get 5 mg by 4k is equal to my x and then my omega will be what omega will be 4k by 5 m so this is how we can calculate the natural frequency of the given system using the same philosophy we can solve the second problem here also what we need to do 
we have to understood that if the mass is moving with an amount of x the first spring is having less displacement x1 this is having x2 and this is having x3 what would be the relation of x with x1 x2 and x3 here also what we can do we can apply the superposition superposition means let's consider the first spring only so this is my pulley which is having a fixed center this is my first spring mass then there is no other spring in my system everything is just on an inextensible string so what will happen if there is a deformation of x1 the entire will be experienced by the mass so the first term is x1 in the second step we can remove the first spring and we can consider the spring which is here so what will happen if this spring is having x3 the total will be experienced by the x because both these springs are connected on on the same string so whatever will be the displacement or the change in length of this spring the same will be experienced by the mass similarly whatever is the displacement of this spring same will be experienced by the mass so the second term will be x3 in the third case here you have to understand because this it is little tricky so i am going to consider only one spring which is connected at this point and then this there is no other spring considered and this is your mass so what will happen if the center is moving in the upward direction amount x2 that means the change in the length of the spring is x2 the mass is going to experience 2x2 moment and why it is so because this pull is not going to move anywhere if the center is moving in the upward direction at both the side of this pulley similar amount of length will be free because the string now have an ex extended length of twice of x2 which is going to be given to this mass m and therefore i can say that in my superposition approach there will be 2x2 so finally i am having expression x is equal to x1 plus x3 plus 2x2 okay let's convert this uh, displacement into the force so force in spring 1 divided by stiffness of spring 1 plus force in spring 3 divided by stiffness and then force in this twice of force in spring 2 divided by the stiffness of spring 2 this would be the x value and i know here based on the tension in the string let's the tension here is t so the all the string will have the tension t and this string is going to have the string 2t because both the side will actually balance by the other side so in this spring the force is 2t stiffness is k so this is going to give me the value of this x2 and t is nothing but your mg so ultimately i will have that x2 is what my x2 will be twice of mg by k and similarly the forces in the first spring and the last spring is mg and mg so i can uh, say that my x1 will be nothing but mg by k and my x3 is also mg by k when i will put all the value even you can ignore this step you can simply calculate the displacement in terms of tension or the forces and then you will put all together here so my x will be what my x will be mg by k plus mg by k plus 2 and then i am having this 2 again so it will be 2 into 2 4 mg by k when i will rearrange my term i will get that my mg by k is 1 plus 1 plus 4 is equal to x so it will be 6 mg so 6 mg by k is equal to x and i know the natural frequency is what g by delta is static and my delta is static is nothing but this x so my natural frequency will comes out here that k by 6m so this is the formula for the natural